What's the deal, my people? You know it is Don Tony Teflon, and the season is over, but the plot leaks keep coming. And in this video, I'm going to go over the leak script for Game of Thrones Season 8, Episode 1. Now, I don't know if this is real, and I don't know if it's fake. So, spoilers, because it could be real. We have seen in the past that other leak scripts were real. So, this could be real. Me being a book reader, I'm used to knowing what goes on in the show. So, it doesn't bother me one bit. And I will watch every episode as I did for Season 1, Season 2, Season 3, knowing everything and still be just as excited so if you're with me here we go scene one the aftermath of the night's king attack on each watch by the sea Tormund and gendra are able to flee the scene undead viserion sets crows and undead a fire lord beric dundarian stays behind to fight the white walkers but dies off screen but not before killing the White Walker that killed Ed. Ed is stabbed to death by a White Walker. Tormund and Gendry ride for Winterfell, while to see a burning castle black in the background. Scene 2 Daenerys, Jon, Tyrion, Davos, Jorah, Brienne, Podrick, the Hound, Masandi, Varys, and Theon arrive in Winterfell. Davos remarks that it has gotten much colder and darker since he has left with Jon. Jon and Arya are first reunited. Daenerys meets Sansa Stark and Sansa asks whether she and Jon are in love now. Daenerys don't give a proper response to that. Sansa doesn't seem to please with Jon returning to Winterfell in Daenerys' presence. Jon notices this and chats with her. She mentions Littlefinger's death and how he always betrayed them right under their nose. She says it's plain stupid to work together with Cersei Lannister. The Hound and Arya also have a conversation with each other. Arya tells the Hound that she didn't regret leaving him behind without killing him off. The Hound answers that Arya should have killed him off right away, especially with all the things he has seen beyond the wall. Scene 3 Euron Greyjoy arrives back in King's Landing with the Golden Company and meets up with Cersei Lannister and the commanders of the Golden Company in the throne room. Cersei thanks Euron for having the Cell Sword shipped to King's Landing. Cersei orders the commander-in-chief to take Storm's End and have the army gather in the fortress. Robert Baratheon once told her that the fortress had stood for many centuries and she's sure that it will keep standing during the long night as well. Since there's no Baratheons holding the castle any longer, it wouldn't be too difficult for them to take it themselves. They'll need to protect themselves during the Great War. Later that night, Euron Greyjoy is about to have sex with Cersei Lannister. Euron jokes that she won't miss her brother after she finds out what he can give her. Cersei's face says it all, though. She isn't too pleased with Euron in her bed. Possibly nudity to be seen here. The following morning, Euron leaves with his ship to silence to ferry the sellsword to Storm End to take the fortress. After he has come back, he tells Cersei he wants to be her king. Inside the silence, Euron has a conversation with Yara Greyjoy about Queen Cersei. Yara point-blank tells him that she knows he isn't interested in being Queen Cersei's pet husband at all. Euron laughs and tells her his good friends from Bravos will take care of that problem soon enough. Scene 4 Daenerys, Jon, Sansa, Tyrion, Davos, Masandi, Sam, Varys, the Northern Lords, and the Knights of the Vale gather in the Great Hall of Winterfell. Sweet Robin and Jon Royce are also present in this scene. Sam reunites with Jon and the two share a hug. John tells Sam that he's glad to have him back. The Northern Lords aren't too pleased to accept Daenerys as their queen. Daenerys defends herself very well, but she doesn't get the support of the North just yet. Lyanna Mormont tells Daenerys Targaryen that she will never call her Your Grace, because she only knows one king, and that's Jon Snow, the king in the North. Tyrion smiles and mentions she's a ferocious girl, on which Jorah replies, The Mormonts don't stand back for anything. John tells them that there's no time to argue with each other and brings up that there hasn't been a word of the Lannister army yet. Sansa responds that she warned them not to trust Cersei Lannister. Tyrion mentions that they can trust his brother Jaime, but Daenerys doesn't seem to agree with him on this one. The group discusses how they will defend the North against the Night King's army. Jon Snow tells Robin that it's wise to bring the Eyrie into the fold and lure the Night King in there. Robin doesn't really seem to care and accepts Jon's proposal. After the meeting, Daenerys tells Jon that the Northern Lords are stubborn and small-minded people. Scene 5 Theon Greyjoy visits the godswoods of Winterfell and thinks of his friend Rob and meets with Bran Stark. 
He immediately apologizes to Bran for everything he has done against House Stark, but Bran tells him that there's no need to do that. He knows that Theon has redeemed himself by saving his sister Sansa. He knows how much he has been through and suffered at the hands of Ramsay Bolton. Theon asks him how he knows all this, but Bran doesn't respond. Arya and Brienne are training, and Jon is impressed by his sister's fighting skills. Arya mentions that she has never forgotten to stick her enemies with the pointy end. He asks Arya why she didn't join the meeting in the Great Hall of Winterfell. Arya answers that Sansa is way better in those things than she is. Scene 6. In Bolantis, Lady Melisandre enters the Red Temple. She's again welcomed by Canavra. Melisandre tells Canavra that she played her part in the Great War to Come. She has united ice and fire. She has served King Jon Snow, the prince who was promised, and brought him back to life. Canarva tells Melisandre that she served their god well on that part, but she has also made a lot of mistakes which she needs to pay for. Canarva tells Melisandre that their god demands one more sacrifice of Melisandre which requires her to return to the north. Melisandre answers that she is not allowed to enter the north. Canarva smiles and answers Melisandre that she could benefit from her punishment then. Scene 7 We see Jaime Lannister at an inn where he meets up with Bronn. Jamie surprised to see Bronn and asks him why he followed him. Bronn answers that there's nothing left for him to do in that stinking city and he'd be up for some adventure in the north. Jamie is glad to have Bronn by his side. Bronn asks Jamie why he left the woman he loves the most, but Jamie doesn't respond to his question. He then asks what he's planning to do now that he has left King's Landing. Jamie tells Bronn that he's on his way to River Run to bring the garrison Lannister army back to the fold. Brown asks why would he give up the castle he has been occupying. Jamie answers what purpose would that have? What does he gain from that? For all he cares, Edmund could have River Run back. Scene 8. Tormund and Gendry arrive in Winterfell. Jon Snow asks Sansa why Bran didn't take the time to join the meeting in the Great Hall. He didn't even come to speak to him. Sansa tells Jon Bran has changed a lot and calls himself the Three-Eyed Raven now. She tells him not to expect much of a conversation with him. Samuel comes in and tells John that there's something he has to tell him. Bran needs to see him urgently. Bran first sees John Snow in the Godswood. He is looking into the past. John mentions that he has encountered a warg beyond the wall. Sam responds that Bran is much more than a warg. He's a green seer. The two inform John Snow about his parentage, which John doesn't seem to believe at first sight. Bran tells John that he knows everything about him. He saw him beyond the wall, surrounded by the free folk. He saw him fight at Hardholm against the Night's King. He saw him when he was stabbed to death by his own men. John can't really believe that he's a Targaryen. Sam mentions that he's the one with the right claim to the Iron Throne, not the nearest Targaryen, but Aegon Targaryen. So there you have it, Game of Thrones Season 8, Episode 1, according to the leaked script. I don't know if it's real, as I said again, I don't know if it's fake, but the other ones look like they were real, so I would lean that this is probably the way it's going to go down. You tell me in the comment section what you think about it. And when I'm done with all of the episodes that happened this season, I'm going to come back and I'm going to review each one like it's really the episode and go through it again with you. So make sure you subscribe and hit that bell so you're notified every time I upload a new video. And if you like the way I do this, please thumbs up this, please spread this across the realm, and please subscribe and until next time you know who it is peace and stay sexy